fully fund? Fully fund would, would, would might be just kind of fund enrollment growth. That would that would be helpful. Well, you know, there's a big difference between funding enrollment growth. I mean, it's not like we're not giving the school districts any money. Your, your definition of fully fund is not just enrollment growth. We fund our schools. We fund them. We fund them every year. Even in 2003, we funded them. We, fu we fund them every year. The definition of fully fund, it, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I happen to believe we are funding them, uh, obviously $4 billion less, but I happen to believe that that money that we didn't fund is our stimulus money that we always said was a one-time financial um, revenue that we gave to school districts. And I happen to believe that the $3.2 billion is not being funded again. So your definition of fully fund, I mean, nobody has a definition of fully fund. You go according to the amount of money that's available as a resource. And, and what you're saying is that we're not doing our job. I happen to believe we do our job to the best of our ability given the amount of money that we have available. And I have been looking, I'm very concerned about the last few days since we started this interim. Um, as I keep reading in the Wall Street Journal and the Dallas Morning News and every other place, we fund our schools today based on property values. And I am looking all over this country and in this state and property values are declining, significantly declining. So it really concerns me that we keep our eye on the ball, make sure that we know what it is we're dealing with. Our schools are very important to us. We're funding them to the best of our ability at this moment in time. And hopefully, as future legislatures come into session, they too will find that education is their number one priority. And this will be, by whatever definition, uh, you might bring to it, it will be a partnership. It always has been a partnership between the state and the local schools. And I want it to remain a partnership. It's never been just us versus them. It's always a we. And, and Madam Chair, I absolutely agree. But the comptroller certified that it was about $2 billion less uh, from property tax. So I understand the, the $2 billion, and, and I understand what, what would happened with the stimulus fund. But we wouldn't be having the debate and the discussions in Senate finance on cuts if everything was just fine. It's, it's not how to, fine. It's not fine. I agree. And, and you were our champion. You fought for as much money as you could, and we went through in the subcommittee of public school finance absolutely questioning what is the what do you absolutely need and that's why you push so hard to get that extra funding well I think that there's a number of folks including parents that really know that their schools and 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 particularly the ones that are caught in target revenue um, that are when you cut and they're already really low that it that it does harm their schools and what I worry about is, is what happens to us in, in future years, whether we are at the table or not, whether we're members of the legislature. It's, maybe it's just that history is a great teacher. And when we did tuition dereg and we had those arguments, we said we are still going to fund higher ed and we are going to continue to. And that tuition increases are only going to be 5 to 10 percent. Well, history has shown us that that wasn't the case. And we've never fully gotten back to, to fund higher ed. We've depended on, on tuition. And so my fear is, I think my comfort level would be better if we had, we understand tough economic times for two years, put this in place, and then revisit it and see if we need to continue at that time. But I'm, I'm a little confused because the comptroller, I think, gave us extra money about three weeks ago because she had anticipated like a 3.2% decrease in property values and she altered it to about 2%, giving us about an extra $600 million. 500. 500 million. And so I'm, and I'm worried about And that's what allocated in our, in our right. budget. And I'm worried about what I'm reading. But just three weeks ago, the comptroller actually upped her estimate and said, no, we're doing better than we thought. Than she think, anticipated. Than she anticipated. I think she was very conservative in, in, in her thing. So I know that we're going to try to get back, and hopefully 
you know, for every 1% of growth in the economy, that means $900 million to our, our general revenue. And let's hope we can see this in the rearview mirror pretty quick. But our I property, was just Our property values in the state of Texas have to be at a plus 4% in order to fully fund growth in the state of Texas, student growth and enrollment growth. Well, thank you. I know there are other members that probably have uh, other questions, but um, and particularly maybe Senator Davis and Senator West since they work with you on it, but mine was just a general concern that every time we give a tool, if it's just you know a two-year tool and, and, and maybe school districts need this from now on, but my fear is that history will repeat itself. And, and we will not get back to fully funding or to funding to the level because what you have here, you're using the 2010-2011 as the baseline. So thank you very much. Thank you.